So today I was like, why don't I film a video of me um, resettling in California? And why don't I do it at the beach? <laughs> why don't I? So I came to the beach and it's freezing cold. I can't feel anything. And I'll just show you guys the beach, but um, okay, like, but it's so cold. So I think I'll just go get some coffee, go back into my apartment, and do the video in there. <laughs> All right, now that I'm home and warm, I can have an actual conversation with you guys. So I've been back for, oh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Dayanita, what's up? I go to SFSU and uh, I just came back from a semester abroad in the Netherlands. <clears throat> I've been back for I think like three weeks. What's today's date? Today's the 16th. I came back January 24th. So yeah, about three weeks, almost a month. And um, it's been kind of weird getting readjusted here. I think I experienced more culture shock coming back than I did when I went over there a lot just because like when i went over there honestly the only culture shock i experienced was just how clean it was there and how organized everything was in regards to their public transportation system like public transport here is so bad okay i honestly didn't structure this uh video so i'm just gonna be rambling and telling you guys how i feel just let me think of an order in my head because i don't want it to just like be going on and on I'm just going to talk about how I've been readjusting to like school, work, people, and then any culture shock that I've experienced. So when it comes to being readjusted to school, I honestly did not have a break. So I left the Netherlands January 24th, which was a Thursday morning. And my last day of school was January 23rd. So... Yeah, and then I came back and school started here January 28th. So it was basically like having the weekend off and then going straight into school. And that was so hard because I was so jet lagged. And I mean, the first few days it was good because I have an 8 a.m. So I was waking up early enough for it. But then by 3 p.m., I generally could not stay awake. And I was having two to three cups of coffee per day. And I mean, I do like drinking coffee and that's why i drink it. it's never to like help me keep me awake it's just because i like drinking it um but to be having that much coffee in one day is kind of a lot and i could feel it like coffee does kind of make me anxious so that was not good and then um it was crazy because usually my first probably two to three weeks of school are very chill like all we do is go to school get our syllabus and talk about what's going to be going on during the semester and then by week three or four that's when like we start writing papers and start doing group projects and all that but this started like that it was just no joke we're just going straight into it and i was like oh my god and so i came back and i already had two internships and classes and i was trying to Figure, I think I was initially taking five classes. Yeah, five classes. So that was going to be 18 units. And that's the most units I've ever taken. So I was already kind of like, who? I mean, I took 18 units when I was at Erasmus, but they were split up into quarters. So that was kind of different. And I also failed the class. So, <laughs> and uh, so I was already like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. But I mean, like, I can do it. I just need to push myself really hard. And then um, coming back to two internships, I was like, I think I think it's fine, but inner me knew it was not going to be fine because I also want to work. And so like to have a job, two internships and five classes, it's kind of a lot. And then I ended up adding another class because my advisors don't really know how my classes are gonna transfer from abroad. So I was like, I'm not willing to risk graduation and I'm just gonna take another class. So I'm currently enrolled in 22 units and I have two internships, which are honestly consuming a lot of my time. They feel like full-time jobs. And I have a part-time job that I have not started working yet, but I have a part-time and I'm looking for something more stable just because that job it's kind of like we sign up for our hours once a month and then 
or we turn in our availability once a month and then they schedule us based off of that. So I already know I'm not gonna get a lot of shifts from that and I need to have money, obviously. So I'm looking for another job, but I also don't want to overwhelm myself. And I already do feel overwhelmed. Like I have a lot going on. There's not one day where, well, actually this week it's been pretty chill, but Mondays are the most stressful days for me. <laughs> like I feel so anxious the minute I wake up. I'm already thinking about everything that I have to get done that week. And it's just go, go, go. And that's how these last three weeks have been for me. There has been no minute to just like sit down and relax. It's like I'm always thinking about what I'm going to do next, what I need to turn in, um, who I should be calling, who I should be emailing. So it's just a constant go, go, go. And... I don't know why I expected it to be any different because that's basically what my life was like before I left to study abroad. But because I was abroad for a semester and all I had to do was really worry about going to school and keeping myself alive, it was a different kind of stress, you know, like it was like a survival of the fittest type of life out there where I was doing okay. And here it's like, I have to keep myself alive. I have to keep my grades up. I have to do well in everything that I'm doing because graduation is coming up and I want people to like like me and want to work with me and stuff <laughs> so yeah it's been a lot honestly in regards to school it's been a lot and I'm surprised I haven't had a mental breakdown yet because I usually do by now <laughs> uh, but no it's been fine and I think what has helped is that now that I'm back, I know that I don't want to settle for things that don't make me happy because beforehand I did a lot of things that I didn't want to do because I just was trying to save up money to study abroad and I was like, well, it's all going to be worth it once I study abroad. But luckily, I had estimated to be studying abroad for a year, so I saved up a lot of money to where right now I don't have to work if I don't want to, but I want to. <laughs> so like, I just want to have extra money to travel and stuff. Um, so yeah, so now I've just kind of like really been outweighing my options, what's going to be better for me mentally, because I, I don't want to fall back into the patterns that I had beforehand. I, I have realized that I was honestly really sad. Like I was a really sad person these last two years in college. And it's funny that no one ever noticed, like everyone always thought I was so happy, but I generally was not happy. And coming back, I can see that now. Now, like, your girl is thriving, y'all. I love myself now. I think getting adjusted to life here has also been pretty hard because um, I have mentioned in a few other videos where Americans in general are very competitive and capitalistic. And uh, we just like, all we know how to do is work like that's literally our lives always hustling and that's how i was brought up too you know my parents are very hardworking people that's really all i know how to do too like go to work and now that i'm not working i feel i feel bored like all of my roommates are at work and i'm just chilling at home i've never been that roommate so that's really weird for me and i i don't like it but i'm also like girl like chill it's okay and then um just how fast paced things are you know like i said there's no time to chill and that's literally everyone everyone seems so stressed and i took up uh, public transport we have the bart here which is our bay area rapid transit it's kind of like a train that goes around the bay area and uh i took it on my way back to sf state from my parents house and i noticed how dead people look on that like Everyone, like, the soul has left their body. I'm not even exaggerating. Everyone just looks sad and depressed, and they just, they're ready to end it all. It's crazy. It's so crazy, because I never experienced that on any public transport in Europe. Like, everyone is just, it's so, it's different. Like, everyone is minding their own business, but you can, uh, there's just something in their faces so it's weird and I like I'm saying like I do not want to end up like that So I'm trying so hard to find a balance in my life where I'm doing things that I want But also getting things done because I know I have to make sacrifices here and there So that's like how I'm trying to get adjusted to life 
also um being adjusted to the people that are around me now so it's weird because before i came back i was always like dang i miss my friends i miss my friends and i was like yeah i'm gonna see them blah blah, blah. and then my first week my first two weeks i went home sorry hold on i went home the first two weeks I guess so home home like to my parents house um so I went straight there and I spent a whole weekend there and then I went to school and I went back that Wednesday night Wednesday Thursday night something like that and I stayed again until Monday and I felt so overwhelmed like being around my parents and having them like try to take care of me that was so weird to me <laughs> I was like what are you doing? You know, like I've been on my own for this long. You don't have to, you don't have to tell me anything. Uh, like my mom would just see me walking around the house without shoes on. She'd be like, put some socks on. And that was just, I'm like, girl, what? Like this is how I live. And what else? I don't know. Like, oh, just like, just parenting stuff. I don't know. It was just too much for me. Like my mom kept offering to make me food or uh, buy me stuff. Like she offered to buy me new sheets. And I was like, no, it's okay. I can do it myself. Like I'm just so stuck in this mindset that I'm by myself and I have to do things by myself because no one else is going to do it for me. That having someone offer to do it for me is just too much for me and I don't want it. And it's just mind blowing. <laughs> I just, I'm like, no, like, leave me alone. And then um, seeing my friends too. Uh, I like, no, no shade. If you guys are watching this, no shade. But hanging out with them for more than one day was too much for me. I was kind of, I was generally overwhelmed by it. I, I was like, I just want to be by myself. And I, I think it's just that I was exhausted from the plane and school and getting readjusted and all that, that like being my, so me as a person, I'm very energetic and very like, ah! like I'm always in your face type of thing. And I, I try to be that whenever I'm around my friends, obviously. And so having to maintain that kind of level of energy for just days on days is a lot and then my sister would come visit with her kids so obviously like her kids are two and like seven months old or something like that so I'm obviously playing with them and releasing all this energy that I don't have and um just yeah like going out with them to just get some coffee or stuff it was just a lot I was exhausted and I didn't want to talk anymore and I just wanted to be by myself and then my mom asked me to come home again this week like she was like if you don't have a job by then come back I was like no <laughs> it's not even like I don't want to see it's not that I don't want to see them of course it's my family but it just takes a lot of energy from me and because I'm doing so much throughout the week, I can't go home and just keep that energy constantly. It's just, I need to have time to myself. My friend is always mentioning, so she says it in a joking tone, um, but I think she means it where she keeps saying like, you're up changed you, who is she type of thing. And I think it's just because I come off a lot more confident now. Before when people saw me, it was always me in some type of work uniform. And they mentioned that too. They were like, oh, where's DJ, the girl with the Noah zip up hoodie. And I'm like, I hate you guys. Cause I was always wearing that sweater. Cause I was always coming from work or going to work when someone saw me. And now it's like, I actually get to wear my clothes and go out places to just go out instead of having to go out because I'm going to go to work. And um, yeah, like it's been great being back and seeing how I have changed for the better though. And I feel so much better and I, I do things for myself and for the benefit of me instead of uh, focusing on, I don't know, like, working to save money to study abroad or I think I just think it's funny when people say like Europe changed you because it, it's a joke but at the same time it, it really did it honestly did do things for me and I'm really grateful I got to experience that 
and everyone keeps telling me like every time that i run into someone new they're like oh my god how was it and oh, me is getting emotional right now because uh i had this one friend my freshman year she was the first person i ever met on campus and i saw her the other day and she goes oh my god you're back and we were just like talking and whatever and then she goes dude i applied to study abroad and i was like what oh my god i'm so excited and she's planning to go to korea and she goes yeah like seeing you do it really encouraged me to do so and i was like are you serious like wow i never thought that i would make that kind of impact on someone so i'm really happy for her and i'm so excited for her to get to experience that and a lot of people have been telling me like, oh, I'm actually crying because I don't know, like studying abroad, studying abroad was something that I dreamed of, for, dreamt of for so long. And I literally sacrificed my first two years of college to be able to financially support myself to do that. And it was really hard to get myself there like it was none of it was easy being there was not easy coming back like none of it has been easy and i'm really happy that i got to do it and did that for myself and that like because people keep telling me like oh you look so happy and you look so happy now type of thing and it just makes me feel so happy that i I don't know, like, I'm encouraging others to do that, and, um, like, I think, I don't know, like, three, four people have told me that their one regret is not having studied abroad when they were in college, or, like, they'll say, like, oh, I wish I would have traveled, and I'm like, you still can, they're like, no, but it's different when you study abroad, and honestly, it really is, like, because I have traveled before studying abroad, and it's a completely different experience, you don't actually get to live there, and stay in one place, and, like, completely experience the culture, you know, like, I went to school there, I lived there, I met Dutch people, so it is a different experience, uh, and it's just, I don't know, it's really good to hear that, because it feels like, all of my sacrifices were worth it because others are feeling motivated to do the same thing and I'm so excited for them to experience what I did. So now that I had my little crying session, um, I'm gonna encourage you guys to study abroad. Honestly, like if you've thought about it, you should really, really pursue it because it's a really great experience. You're gonna get so much from it and you really don't get this time back, you don't. So live your best lives because we never know when we're gonna die. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me as usual. Also, let me know what you guys think about my past videos. They're just kind of like all over the place because I just don't really have that much time to film but i think i'm gonna do like a day in the life or a week in the life i don't know tell me if you guys want to see certain things in the sf or have questions about things and i'll answer them yeah so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye